video is brought to you by Brilliant, a great way to learn computer science and much more. Go to brilliant.org slash traversy media and the first 200 subscribers get 20% off. Hey, what's going on guys? So in this project, we're going to be dealing with charts. Okay, we're going to use a library called Apex Charts, which is open source and free. And it allows you to display your data in really cool ways. Okay, so I'm going to show you some examples. Uh, if you were to download, click this download button, you'll get a package with a whole bunch of samples and you'll get stuff like this. So this is an example of a line chart. If I go ahead and reload, you get some cool animations. You can interact with it a little bit. You have a uh, mix chart. So this is like a line chart with a column chart. And then you also have like full dashboards that they give you. If I reload, you'll see the cool animations here. So this would be really nice if you were building like a CMS or something, maybe an e-commerce platform where you wanted an admin area and you wanted some analytics, maybe the, the views or number of users, say stuff with sales. It's it's really cool. And um, uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a nice idea to implement into your projects if, if possible, you know, if you have data that you want to display. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a bar chart that shows the, the, the 10 largest cities in the U.S. by population. OK, so something very simple. So it's an introductory uh, level level video. So if you're not a, a JavaScript whiz and don't worry about it, it's not this stuff isn't that difficult. Um, we're going to first do it in vanilla JavaScript and then we're actually going to implement it into React because if we go to docs, and go to integrations, you'll see that they actually have packages available for React and Vue. OK, so we'll do it in vanilla JavaScript and then we'll spin up a quick create React app application. We'll install Apex charts and we'll create a component that's going to be the same chart that we create with vanilla JavaScript. OK, so that's what we'll be doing. Uh, let's start off with just the vanilla JavaScript version. So I'm going to jump into VS Code. I just have an index.html file and a main.js file. So in the index.html, I'm just going to put some boilerplate uh, head body tags. I'm just going to say Apex um, chart example and uh, no CSS, no CSS. Uh, well, we are going to put a little bit of styling, but I'm not going to put it in a separate file because it's it's very little. Um, then we want to include the CDN. So I'm going to say script with a source. Uh, the source you can find on this page here. This is the docs page and down at the bottom. If we click this, it'll open up the, the actual file, but we just want to grab the URL. So we'll grab that and include that in our source. OK, then, of course, we need our main JS. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Main .js. And as far as styling, it's going to be very simple. So I'm just going to put a style tag up here and I'm going to grab the styling and paste it in. Um, so basically, we just we're changing the font and then we have a container that's just going to it's going to make it 80 percent of the full width, push it into the middle with margin auto. Very simple. And then as far as HTML goes, we just want our container. And then we need an element that's going to display the chart, OK, or output the chart. So it's going to be a div with the ID of chart. And that's it. That's all we need for our index HTML. So let's save this. I'm going to go ahead and open this up with live server, which is a VS Code extension. And there we go. So we just have an empty page. You can see the title showing up here, though. So now what we want to do is start to implement the chart options. That's that's what makes the chart is you have this huge object that has all these different um, values, including the data, the labels and styling, all that stuff. And if you go to the documentation and you go to like chart essentials, it'll show you how to add the had the data, which is in something called a series. OK, so that goes in the options um, categories is going to be kind of like the the labels of the data and we want ours to go across the bottom. So we're going to put it on the X axis and then we also have options for just like color and stuff like that. If we want to show labels and all the all types of stuff and it's all in the documentation. But let's go back to VS Code and let's go to main JS. OK, so first we have our chart options. And then after that, we're going to initialize our chart and then we want to render our chart. 
Okay, so those are basically like the three steps we need to do here. Um, so we're going to have a variable called options, which is going to be just one big object. And to initialize the chart, we're going to create a variable. I'm going to call it chart and we'll set it equal to new and then apex charts, which takes in two things. It takes in the, the selector that uh, we want to output it in, which is going to be this div with the ID of chart. So you could use any um, any JavaScript selector you want or jQuery if you wanted to. But I'm going to do document dot. Uh, let's just say query selector and we want the ID of chart. Okay, and then the second parameter is just going to be the options that we define above. And then to render it, we simply call chart dot render. All right, so it's not going to show up now because we don't have our the correct options that it needs. So let's go into this object here. And basically we have um, first of all, we have just chart, which in here goes like the, the width, the height, just some basic options. So let's say we want the height to be 450. That's in pixels. The width I want to go all the way across. So I'm going to use quotes here and say 100%. And let's do a type. Okay, so the type is going to be bar. There's lots of different types you can use. Um, and I'm also going to do a background color of just light gray. And then you can also do a foreground color, which is for uh, color like that, I believe. Yeah, so let's say we'll do three, 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 which is almost black. All right. So as far as the data, Um, we have we have data and we have the labels for the data, which is called what you call categories. So the data goes in something called series. Okay, so we want to say series and this is actually going to be an array with an object inside. And then we want to give it a name with this is actually optional, but I'm, I'm going to give it a name of population. And then we want the actual data. Okay, so instead of going to the article and, co and copying everything one by one, uh, and I'll show you that article again, it's right here. It gives you all of the different numbers for all the different cities. Um, instead of doing that, I'm just going to paste the array in and it's just the numbers without the commas. Okay, so let me just grab those real quick. Okay, so let's paste this in here as an array. And it's in order. So this is like New York, Los Angeles. Uh, what's the other one? Chicago and so on. So that's our data. Now for the categories, we want to go under the series. So I'm going to put a comma here and I want these on the X axis. So I'll say X axis. This will be an object. And inside this object, we want to do categories. Okay. now this categories is actually an array of um, of the labels. So I'm going to grab those as well rather than typing all those in. Okay, so as you can see, these are going to match up with the data and, and, and you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do populations of cities, whatever you want. Just put the data here and the label here. Okay, but make sure they're in order like this should be New York. This should be L.A. This should be Chicago and so on. So just by doing that and when I save, it's going to fix it up a little bit because I'm using the prettier extension for VS Code. Um, but let's take a look at our chart now. And there we go. So just from what we've done so far, we've created a, a pretty decent looking chart. It has some animation. Okay, so when it loads up, it, it animates a um, couple things I want to do here is I don't like the the actual labels in here. So I'm going to take those out when you hover over it, you get you get the population anyway. So I'm going to take those out. I'm also going to change the color. Uh, I'm going to change it to like a, a reddish orange kind of style. Uh, I also want to add a title in here showing what this is. So let's go back to um, our options array here. Let's go under the X axis. Okay, make sure you're you're under the curly brace, not the categories array. So we're going to put a comma right here and we're going to continue on with some options. So I want to do plot options and this has a couple different things that you, that you can do. All I want though is bar and this bar object has a property called horizontal. And this just basically 
uh, it, it can format the bar chart to go horizontal if you want. The false is actually the default, which is what I'm going to keep. But just to show you, if I put it to true and we go and take a look at our chart, now it's going uh, in a horizontal fashion. Okay, later on, I'm actually going to show you how to put a button here. You can click and we can switch it to horizontal just to give you an example of an event because there's different um, event methods that you can use with this library. All right, but for now, let's let's actually put this back to false. That'll bring it back to normal. And then underneath that, I'm going to do fill. So fill, we can do colors. Uh, and then this is actually an array. You can do multiple colors, but I'm just going to do one. So it's going to be hexadecimal. It's going to be F44336. So now if we take a look, it's like a reddish, almost orange kind of color. Um, and then I want to remove those labels, like I said. So we want to say data labels. And in here we want to say, um, uh, what is it? Enabled. And we want to set that to false because I don't want those to show. So let's go check that out. And now those are those are gone. And you can see when I hover over, it shows the population number anyway. So the last thing I want to do is the title. I want it right in here to say like top 10 cities or whatever. So we can add on here title and this can take a lot of different things. Actually, of course, we need the text. So text, I'm going to say largest cities in uh, let's say largest cities by population or largest U.S. cities. Okay, so if I just put that, it's going to look like that, which doesn't look that great. So I actually want it in the middle. I want it bigger. I want it. Uh, I want to add some margin. I want to push it down on the Y axis a little bit. So we're going to add some extra properties here. Uh, we're going to do a line. So a line center. We're going to add a margin. 20. We're going to do a y axis or a offset y offset y 20 and then i want to make the font size a little bigger um, you can't just do font size here you actually have to put style and then font size and then i'm going to put quotes and let's do 25 pixels all right let's check that out and there we go so now this is pushed down it's bigger it's centered so great so now we have a nice little chart So you can see how easy it was to create that. Now you can also have different um, uh, methods. Okay, so if we go to the docs and we go to chart essentials. Let's see right here. Actually, it's right here methods. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do here. You can like update the data, which is the series toggle series append data. What I want to do is update the options. Okay, so we can create JavaScript events that will actually change any of these options. What I want to change is the orientation, the horizontal. Okay, so I want to change this to true on a button click. So I'm going to go back to the index HTML file and I'm going to put a button right below here. All right, so I'm just going to put a button and I'll say horizontal. Okay, and I'm not going I'm not doing anything special here. I'm not I don't I'm not even going to add an ID. I'm just going to use button as a query selector. So down here, let's create our event or, or our method. We'll say uh, event method example. So we need to grab that button. So let's say document dot query selector. And it's the only button on the page, so I'll just do button. Um, and we want to do add event listener. Okay, we want to listen for a click event. And and the second parameter here is going to be a function. Let's use an arrow. And what I want to run, let's just go back to the docs real quick. So what I want to run is this right here: chart dot update options. And then you can pass in any options that you want to change. So I'm actually going to I'm not going to copy it, but this is what I want to run chart dot update options. So right here, chart dot update options. All right. And inside here, we'll put our curly braces and we can choose anything we want to update. In our case, 
we're going to grab the plot options bar and then the horizontal value. So I'm actually going to just grab this right here and paste that in. Uh, wait a minute. Update options. Yeah, that should work. So we want to change this to true, making it horizontal when that button is clicked. So I'm going to save this and let's go back. Okay, so we have a button here. If I click it, it goes to horizontal. All right, so you can see how these different methods work. Uh, and there's a lot more that you can get into with with the different all these different methods that are available. Um, you also have different events. So uh, obviously we did the render, but there's other lifecycle methods here that you can use as well. So there's a lot you can do. I'm just really going over the basics. If you want to add another button to make it go back to original to the original orientation, that's fine as well. But I think we're going to stop here as far as the vanilla JavaScript version. And now we're going to jump into React. All right, guys, so now we're going to jump into React. We're going to just spin up a quick application using Create React App and then implement Apex charts. OK, so I'm in a new folder called Apex underscore React. I have my my integrated terminal open down here and I'm going to generate a new application. So I'm going to use NPX, which just runs Create React App without it being installed on your computer. So we'll do NPX create dash react dash app and we want to just put a dot for the current directory. Okay, so that'll just generate a new app. So while that's going on, I'm going to jump into the docs here and go to uh, integrations and then react apex charts. Okay, so basically what we need to do is install these two packages. We need the standard apex charts package along with react dash apex charts. Okay, and then we need to create a component that's going to have the options in its state. It's also going to have series as a, a separate piece of state. So the series won't go in the options like it did uh, when we were using vanilla JavaScript. And then, of course, we output the um, the chart component. We pass those the, the state options in as uh, as uh, props. Okay, so let's go back. So that's all done. Let's. Let's install the two dependencies we need, which is uh, what is it? Apex charts and react dash apex charts. Okay, while that's going on, I'm going to open up source app dot JS and just clean this up a little bit. So I don't want this logo here. I'm going to get rid of that and then I'm going to get rid of everything that's within this div with the class of app. So basically the whole header here. So we're going to get rid of that. Okay, and for now, let's just put an H1 and we'll just say hello and save. Okay, so now I'm going to just go ahead and run the server with NPM start. And we should just see hello. All right, good. So let's go back in here and I'm just going to get rid of all the styling in the app CSS for now. Let's get rid of that. Actually, you know what we'll do is we'll paste in the styling that we had in the vanilla JavaScript app. So this right here, the body and the container, I'm going to just grab that. I'm going to copy that and paste it in here. OK, and then we need to create our chart uh, chart component. So in the source folder, we're going to create a folder called components. And inside there, we're going to create a file and I'm going to call this pop chart.js Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag over the original main JS that we had that has all of the options um, because we need all these options, but they're going to be formatted differently because they're going to be part of our component state, right? So um, first of all, let's create a just a, a basic react component. So we'll go ahead and import. Let's import uh, react and component from react oops okay we also want to import the um, we want to import chart and that's going to be from react apex charts all right then let's create our class so we'll say um, class pop chart extends components and let's be sure to export 
default pop chart. And let's put in our render. Okay, so our render for now, I'm just going to return. Uh, let's just return an H1 and we'll just say chart. Okay, so we'll save that. Um, and I just want to import this into app.js just to make sure it shows up. So let's import pop chart from. And we want to go inside components slash pop chart and we want to put that right in here. Like that and save. Okay, let's go back to our browser and let's open up 3000 and we get chart. Good. All right, so let's head back into pop chart and let's let's set up. Let's set up our, our chart um, uh, component that we brought in. So instead of returning an H1, let's get rid of this. Let's actually return a class of container because remember we want to put it in the middle and so on. We could actually put. You know what? Let's not do that. Let's put container in app JS. So instead of class name app, we'll just say container like that. All right, that way we can just return our actual chart component. All right, and this is going to take in a bunch of properties. Oops. Okay, so we want our options. So options is actually going to come from the state. So I'm just going to set it to um, just an empty object for now. We want our series. So we'll set that. Uh, then we want the type type is going to be bar. So in, when we did vanilla JavaScript, we actually put the type and the height and the width inside this chart object. But now in in react, we're going to put those things in here. So let's say height equals uh, 450 and let's say width equals 100%. Okay. now the options in the series, these are going to come from our state. So we'll say this dot state dot options and series this dot state dot series. Okay. so now we need to create our state. So I'm actually going to use a constructor here. All right, so let's say this dot state equals our state object. So we're going to have options, which will be an object. And then we're also going to have series, which will be an array with an object in it, just like it was here in main JS. If we look at series, um, actually, what I can do is just copy the name and the data. And we can actually just put that right in here in series. Okay, um, and then for options, we're going to have chart just like we did, just like we did here, except we don't need height, width and type because that was directly passed in. So we'll just take the background and the four color. All right, um, next thing we'll do is the X axis. And that's an object and, and here's where we put our categories which is an array. So I'm just going to go to main JS and get our categories. Which is our city names. And we'll go ahead and put those in here. All right, so what else do we have? We had um, so chart series X axis categories. Those are taken care of. So let's grab the rest of this stuff. Plot options, fill data labels and title. So we'll grab that and go right under X axis, put a comma, paste those in, save. And that should be everything. So if we go back to our application and there it is. So we basically have what we had in, in with vanilla JavaScript. Now I do want to add the button to toggle the orientation so that it can go horizontal. So that's going to work a little differently since we're in React. Um, so I'll go down here and create a button. Now, right now, we're just returning the chart component, so I can't just add a button down here because then we'll be returning multiple 
um, elements and we can't do that. So we're going to wrap them both. I will put actually let's put the button here first. So we'll say button um, horizontal, but we have to wrap these both in an element. You could use a div or something. I'm actually going to use a react fragment. So react dot fragment, which is like a fake DOM element. It's not actually going to show up in the DOM. Okay, uh, and then this button here, let's just tab these over. This button is going to have an event. So let's say on click equals a method called this dot on click. So up here, right above the render, we need to create on click. Now, I'm not going to do this because then I would need to bind this to to this method. So I'm going to use an arrow function. So we want to use this format. All right. And just to test it out, let's say console log uh, one, two, three. Okay, so we'll go back to our app and let's open up our dev tools here and and go to console and click and we get one, two, three. All right, so we know that's working now. The purpose of this is to change the state, right? We need to reach in and change this value from false to true. Now, this is going to be a, a little difficult because it's so deep in there. It's it's in options. plot options bar and then horizontal. So we need to kind of reach in and grab that that single value and change it. So we're going to be using the spread operator quite a quite a bit here. Um, state is immutable in react, so you can't just change it. You have to kind of make a copy of it. All right. So what we're going to do is say this dot set state. Okay, so we're going to set our state. We want options. Okay, it's an options uh, options is an object and then we want to copy everything that's currently in options. So to do that, we use the spread operator. Okay, it'll take everything that is currently in the options and spread it across into this value. So we say this dot state dot options. Okay, then we put a comma. I'm going to go on to a new line. Let me just format this so it doesn't look crazy. I'm going to go on to a new line and then we want inside options. We want plot options and we need to copy everything that's in there. So again, spread operator, this dot state dot options dot plot options. All right, so comma and we want to go another level deep into bar. So we'll say bar. That's going to be an object and we're going to put the spread operator with this dot state dot options dot plot options. dot bar comma and then finally we get to horizontal and we want to change that to true like that. Okay, so I know that that looks a little crazy, but we have to kind of reach in and and change it um, without mutating it. So let's go back and let's try it out horizontal and it works. Awesome. And if we were to let's let's reload here and let's open up our react dev tools and if we go to pop chart we look at state so under options uh where is it plot options bar horizontal is false but when i click this you'll see that it changes to true so what if we want this to toggle we can do that pretty easily actually so instead of hard coding true what we could do is we could take the value whatever the value currently is and just set this to whatever it's not. If it's set to true, set it to false. If it's set to false, set it to true. So the way that we access it is by saying not this dot state dot options dot plot options dot bar dot horizontal. Okay, so whatever that value is not, that's what we're going to set this to and that sh that should let us toggle it. So let's go down here and change from horizontal. We'll just say change. All right. So now if we go back and hit it, it's going to go horizontal. If I click it again, it's going to go back. Okay, so we can now just kind of switch it around. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you'll use this in some of your projects if you ever need to display data nicely in a chart. Um, obviously, this is this isn't the best looking chart that you could create. And you saw that with the examples, but this gives you an idea of how to use the library.
All right, so thanks for watching, guys. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. So programming is all about logic with some principles of math and science and a great place to strengthen your mind and become a better overall programmer is brilliant. They have some of the most unique types of brain building courses I've ever seen including computer science and math courses, quizzes and more. The tests and quizzes really break down the answers for you when you get them wrong and they give you a much better understanding of, of where you went wrong. And it doesn't matter which type of program you are or which language you use, Brilliant's concepts benefit everyone in the industry by installing deep problem solving skills and critical thinking. You won't learn to memorize like many online courses teach, but you'll learn to understand and really wrap your head around all types of concepts that have to do with computer science and just logic in general. They have both free and premium accounts available, so click on the link in the description and the first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off.